Hello. Just want to make a short video about something. Uh, something that bothers me shouldn't bother me, but uh, this, this kind of stays on my mind a lot. So I'm going to make a short video about this, and uh, maybe later we'll touch on it a lot more. Matter of fact, I probably will. I'd like to touch on it a lot more, do a little study on it. Uh, and the topic is uh, speaking in tongues. Today is uh, June the 19th of uh, 2023. Uh, it's in the late afternoon. It's hot here in Texas. Uh, right now it is uh, 10 minutes till 5 in the afternoon. So it's starting to cool off. Uh, plus I went riding on my motorcycle a little earlier and I was able to enjoy that. But I want to read something. The... Uh, out of a book called the complete bible answer book the collector's edition and it's written by hank hanegraaff also known as the bible answer man <laughs> uh, what i'm going to read to you is not my writing this is uh hank hanegraaff's writing the title of this is it's not very long the title of this is is speaking in tongues the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He says, it has become increasingly common for Christians to suppose that the full gospel includes the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Thus the question, is speaking in tongues the evidence of being baptized by the Holy Spirit? You know, uh, Certain religions believe that if you don't speak in tongues, if you don't have that gift, then you haven't been baptized by the Holy Spirit. You don't have the Holy Spirit in you. Which, if you read the Bible, uh, I think there's a good argument about that in the Bible that uh, that's false. Okay, so continuing on. First, as the Apostle Paul makes plain, believers are all baptized by one spirit and one body into one body. And that is 1 Corinthians 12, uh, verse 13. Yet not all who believe speak in tongues. That's verses 10 and 30. Thus, tongues may be a manifestation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but tongues cannot be the manifestation. Furthermore, even if one does speak in tongues, it is not a guarantee that they have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. For as Paul puts it, quote, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. End quote. That's 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. Indeed, says Paul, without love, quote, I am nothing, verse 2. Moreover, social psychological manipulation tactics such as peer pressure or the subtle power of suggestion can induce ecstatic utterances wholly apart from the spirit they don't necessarily have to be because of the spirit in you the normative sign of the baptism of the holy spirit is not speaking in tongues but the confession of jesus christ as lord repentance from sin true repentance and obedience to God. Finally, as Scripture makes clear, the normative sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues. Okay, this is what was, I just read was in the red letters and now it's going to repeat. Is not speaking in tongues, but the confession of Christ as Lord, repentance from sin, and obedience to God. Romans 8, verses 1 through 17, 1 John 4, verses 12 through 16, and Ephesians 1, 13 through 15. Quote, those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Not what's in their heart, not what they desire, but what the Spirit desires. That kind of Reminds me of another topic, tickling of ears. Preachers saying what they think you want to hear, 
and not saying what you don't want to hear so that they don't lose their audience, their, their congregation, their income. Okay, go on with this. Those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of a sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Romans 8 verse 6. As such, the fruit of the Spirit is not merely speaking in tongues, but, quote, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of problems with quite a few of those. And that can be found referenced in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. In sum, righteousness, not tongues, is the core of Christianity compressed in a single word. For further study, see Hank Hanegraaff, quote, What does it mean to say that the Holy Spirit is in you? End quote. The Bible Answer Book, Volume 1, page 31 and 32. So, like it says, just because you speak in tongues doesn't mean you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. There are certain things, you know, that can happen with your mind that can make you speak and, you know, say things that don't make sense. They're just utterances of sound. And speaking of utterances, have you ever prayed and you just couldn't, or you tried to pray and you couldn't have the words come out of your mouth? Nothing would come? I have. And, uh, sorry, ants are crawling on me. I have, and, uh, but the Bible assures us that even though we can't get the words out, our groanings, He understands. God understands what's on your heart, what's in your mind. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you want to say but can't. There's nothing you can hide from God, whether it's thoughts, words, actions, behaviors, habits, whatever. Your sins, all of your sins are... No matter how hard you try to hide them, you can hide them from anybody but God. God knows what you're doing. God knows what you've done. He knows what you're going to do. But thank goodness, Jesus died on that cross for sins in the past, in the present, and the sins you'll commit in the future. So anyway, I don't want to wander off on too many different subjects, but hopefully I'll be able to do this uh, here before too long where I can sit down and actually organize my notes, you know, make some notes about what I want to say because uh, most of the time I can't organize. I just get in here and start talking and rambling and it doesn't do much good to do all that, does it? Bugs are getting me now. <laughs> so I hope you have a good day.